Hello everyone and welcome back to Technically Unsure where I'm not really sure what I'm doing technically. I am not sure. What am I doing? So today we are going to take a look at a pack of multiple components from a company called Turing Pi. And they just released a Turing Pi 2.5 and Turing RK1. It is a board basically which you can install for compute modules. So you can install the Raspberry Pi CM4 compute modules but you have to buy the adapter adapter for it or just use the Turing RK1 compute modules. I bought everything by the way. It's not sponsored or they didn't send this free. And when I say I bought everything, yes, I mean it. So I bought four of Turing RK1, Turing Pi 2.5. I also bought the CM4 adapters and heatsink. First of all, these are the RK1 and I believe these should be either the adapters or the heatsinks. Okay, so four of those, four of these. So this is the power supply output is 12 volt 12 amps so it's chunky boy and this is the actual board so they put the i guess this is the turing pi 2 so this is the adapter for compute module yeah cm for adapter v1 turing pi 2 you can use these to just connect four compute modules to this okay and this is the board itself this and in here we have another one of those cm4 modules there you go and another one i see here there you go so we got four cm4 modules the board itself and this bunch of cables and the silica gel this is the board usually you know you put the cm4s like flat and then screw them in but it seems like this is like a easier installation you install them vertically it's like installing rams on a motherboard and uh, yeah you put the cm4 on this so if you want to use cm4 by the way if you don't what you can do is use these rk ones so let me take it out okay that's chunky oh actually that's not that's just the heat sink so i assume these are the rk ones okay this bad boy it actually this one can run rk3588 so this one does have eight cores basically four arm cortex a76 four arm cortex a55 and it does have a g610 gpu the npu is six tops and the ram goes up to 32 gig but i bought 16 gigabyte version i believe 32 gigabyte emmc it supports gigabit ethernet two usb 3s two usb 2s pci gen 3 it does have a hdmi support hdmi 2.1 8k at 60 fps they're claiming that's all rk3588 we have seen so many sbcs like that right so this bad boy with 16 gigabyte ram I believe I paid 160 or 70 dollars actually 190 for 16 gigabyte 150 for 8 gigabyte 300 for 32 gigabyte so what you can do is you literally just line them up there is one just like RAM it's literally like RAM this is the shorter end longer end shorter end longer end you put it like that you open these up you put it in there push it in and it just like RAM gets installed like that in terms of this which is called Turing pi 2.5.2 is over here in terms of io there is a usb c over here there is a usb 2 hdmi 2 gigabit ethernet in here these are usb 3.0 ports there is rtc battery slot over here yes you can power it with the regular power supply adapter i will just go with the adapter i bought for that i guess where are we plugging that in so we forgot this part i guess well here is also a safe a cable so you saw the io over here there is an nvme slot over here another one over here this looks like a sim card slot i guess there is oled three uarts this one is gpio which is one two three four five six twelve pins there's two USB C debug and uart over here as well three buttons over there so this one over here is dsi display connection usb3 header two sata ports which they also provided the power cable for it so there is a micro sd card slot over here and four nvme ssd slots over here and that's it pretty much on the back side but where do we put plug this in is it on this power board so it gets jankier and jankier because if i'm supposed to use this 
like that that's fine but what if i don't want to use the power supply right let's say i want to use the actual motherboard power supply then i won't have this then we have to use the power supply to power it i guess yeah so you install it this way okay you that clicks i'm going to use as i said the 12 volts from this power supply there is heatsink pre-installed over here and in the middle there is another gpio node so it's a 40 pin gpio there is another one here it says bmc gpio and we have installed this in here but i have to install heatsink so i'm gonna take that out i just wanted to show you how it is so heatsink this thermal pads are there so this one goes over here i guess and the small one is most likely for power one yeah this one and then install this on top of it and where do we plug this okay right next to it so there is the connector right next to it so let's get into fast forward mode let me install everything and then we take it from there we are back and i have nothing but good news and i take back when i said you know something is janky honestly it's not at all it is very fancy very advanced and everything is working out of box so i installed the four modules right all with heatsink and a fan on it and i just plugged and play just basically inserted the power cable and the ethernet that's all as you can see on my screen this is the ip address of the Turing pi itself Okay, and I found it by just pinging Turing Pi. It added its host name to my DHCP server, and that's the IP address that you see on my screen 192.168.75.71. And then it automatically gave IP address 72, 73, 74, and 75 to all my nodes. Okay, and in order to log into this admin panel, you just have to enter username is root and the password is Turing, and then you log in. You just first come here to flash node, you select the Ubuntu image, and you select the node node one two three four and then you flash the os right here so no cables no nothing it is fancy as hell you can just do this remotely you can leave this in your rack and every time you need to do something just do it from the admin panel even firmware upgrade for the board itself you do it from here you select the tpu file and upload it right there and the nodes you have full control over here you can turn them off turn them on you can restart them you see all of that and you can give them nicknames so you can you remember it better you know let's say this is then let's say i'm just saying nginx this is i don't know mongodb whatever it just works and what i did was basically i flashed four ubuntu server images to all these four and if you haven't seen my other video where i am reviewing the board from the 52 pi desk pi super 6c that video where i am showcasing six cm5 modules and and cm4 modules i actually show how to set up kubernetes how to set up ansible how to do commands run a command on all of them install kubernetes with a single command on all of them i showcase all that in there go check that out so let me show you basically what i did ansible and hosts so you can see 72 73 74 75 okay so i have the four nodes right there username default is ubuntu when you log in it asks you to change so i changed it to unsure technically and now let's say if you want to do ansible dash module ping and i do want to do it for all all four gets results okay it gets response now let's say you want to do a benchmark obviously i can log into a single one and do a benchmark from that one that would be boring right what about if i want to do benchmark on all four at the same time we can do that too so instead of module ping we're gonna do shell and the command we're gonna say sysbench threads equals eight and cpu run watch the power consumption three two one let's go okay 26 watts but i had one error one two three four and one of them failed what happened okay let's do the test again i had to install suspension on one of the nodes it wasn't installed let's do it again all four of them are running suspension and it jumps up to 30 watts and i have two sata discs connected although not being used so we are getting almost fourteen thousand from each fourteen thousand on this one fourteen thousand let's call that and a fourteen thousand so let's something like a fourteen thousand on each one of these bad boys we're getting that means and it won't jump up to 30 watts as you saw the number 14,000. just remember raspberry pi 5 you're gonna get 10,500 10,400 something like that we're getting 14,000, so it's faster than the raspberry pi 5 so if we want to also do iperf 3 together from all nodes so bi-directional let's go power consumption ran to 17 okay what's happening the server is busy try again the server is busy ah okay yeah 
Yeah, so when it test is running on one, it doesn't run on the other one. Well, what's going on? Hold on. Let's do one manual test, actually. Let's SSH into one of the nodes, the first one. 192, 168, 75, 72. I'm sure technically. Let's go into sudo. Oh, by the way, let's do a new fetch. There you go. So Ubuntu 22 LTS and everything is installed. Host is Turing Machines RK1 and Rock Chip and everything. ARM Cortex A55 and A76, okay? And let's do a stress NG while we are here. Power consumption goes up to 20 watts. So I guess when you're going full throttle on one CPU of one of these boards, it is five watts, I guess, 15, five, 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 five. So just 20 watts in here. So let's see, it's a 12,000. Let me do my iPerf test. That, that's the reason I came here. And if we do bi-directional, Okay, the first disappointing thing that I'm gonna be honest on this, so I, I kinda knew that because when I was doing this flashing from this admin panel thing, when I uploaded the Ubuntu image, it was a little bit slow. By the way, I didn't even tell you guys, this computer is over here, that's the controller node. This is the computer that I'm running the screen recording from. There's a Raspberry Pi 5 in it, that's controlling these. And I also installed Kubernetes, so let's go here, kubectl, get nodes. So node one, two, three, four, I have one, two, three, three, four, okay? All four nodes have Kubernetes installed. And how I did that, again, you can check the other video, but I literally copy pasted this command. sudo curl, you get the k3s.io, you get the token from your own server with everything, and then you give the URL and IP address of the controller node, which is this right now, and the port and the name. And then for name, I use the host name of each node. So node one, node two, node three, node four. So now I have a Kubernetes node running on all of them, and I can basically do whatever I want want okay i just wanted to do stress ng on all the nodes and yes that's what i'm talking about so it goes to 37 38 when you're doing stress ng with eight cores on all of the nodes so that's what you're gonna get so it's gonna be one two three so five 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 20 watts idle was 15 so it jumped even above 37 so if you use every single node to max that's what you're going to get okay ethernet was a little bit let down but i'm not gonna say anything bad about it that much unless you want to run a web application or some application that really needs super fast internet and you're gonna cap the gigabit ethernet and that's what you want to do probably you can't unless again you do two you get better speeds you have to do link aggregation and all that then you will get better speeds but on a single port single node it's a little bit slow the router thing that they have in this that is doing the routing and the managing connection on all these fours that is a little bit slow other than that everything out of box worked perfectly i like when everything is easy to to set up and easy to work doesn't take any time to tweak around to fix things and issues and crashes and bugs I, I just powered it and this web interface showed up and everything is working i had zero trouble starting stopping updating installing nodes and as you can see i got ansible kubernetes everything working on all these nodes so nothing negative other than the ethernet and the power consumption you saw that idle is almost always on 15 when you're doing full throttle on stress ng on every single one of these it goes up to 37. this is a very very powerful computer you can absolutely run all sorts of servers on these and another thing that i before i forget i don't have it it's a little bit expensive i might buy later but i don't have the jetson nano from nvidia that you can also plug that in in here that would give you a lot of horsepower i've seen their videos they are plugging that jetson nano thing in here it's also not in stock and these people buy it and then sell it three times the price actually on amazon i'm not gonna do that from scalpers so if i find the proper price i will order but i see it on arrow.com it's been back ordered for 24 weeks or something like that anyway that is perfectly working with absolutely no trouble and what i did was i had the compute modules with already operating system installed on it i plugged this in and also booted but performance and everything yeah it's not a match to this 
this. I didn't want to show you guys, so I set up everything. Kubernetes, Ansible, all, all that in the Turing Pi's own compute modules. And it's super fast. So thanks for watching. Give it a shot if you have the Jetson Nano. Give it a shot with that as well. I would love to hear if you guys have an experience with it. If you have tried it, I haven't. I just saw in their video. And it seems like this board is going to be released soon. Uh, it's full disclosure. As I said, I paid for everything myself. I just asked them if they can ship it a little bit earlier and they appreciate that. But seems like it's going to be shipped in October. Overall, I'm really, really happy that I bought this. This is a super computer. It's just uh, for me, like for running a bunch of servers. You can have dedicated applications running on these four. And I have some cool ideas for this. Hopefully we'll make some other videos with that. There you have it. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.